Cheers up, YouTube. Welcome to the Coffee Pod. My name is Chishi Zed. Drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. Do women love men who've been passed around? Let's get it. And what makes us think a woman wants a guy that's been passed around? Because y'all show us every single day. Mm. Look at the celebrities y'all chase. Look at the ladies, men. Mm. Y'all literally go after the guys that... This is common sense, bro. Okay, so this is a common misconception where people conflate cause with correlation. And so I'm going to break this one all the way down. What women are showing you mm -hmm. is that, like all people, they want what is desirable. Mm. Men who are desirable tend to have a lot of options. Now, the trade-off, the downside, is that a lot of men who have a lot of options have very little self-control. And so the most desirable men also tend to be the men who get around the most. That does not mean True. that women like men who get around. It means that women like men who are desirable and they like desirable men enough that oftentimes they will overlook certain undesirable trade-offs that come along with that. Okay. To further make this point, I am going to use an illustration. I like nice things. People who love me know that I like nice things. You look expensive. When I graduated law school, my dad bought me a really nice car. Now, I love nice cars. What mm. I don't love is high maintenance cars, but the high maintenance cars tend to be the nicer ones and the nicer cars tend to be the more high maintenance vehicles. Okay. Does that mean I like cars that are high maintenance? No. It means I like nice cars so much that I am willing to put up with the trade-off, which I find obnoxious, of the fact that they are high maintenance. Mm -hmm. Now, since my dad is a provider, he also put a full package on the car, which means that if ever I needed maintenance, if I needed to get a tire changed, anything like that, I could do so with zero out-of-pocket cost. Mm. There, he's eliminated the undesirable trade-off. And I think a lot of women, I wouldn't speak for all of them, but I feel confident saying a lot, if they could have a really desirable guy who didn't have the undesirable trade-off of being for everybody, nine out of 10, those women would choose the guy without the trade-offs. But in the absence of said options, they go for the desirable guys even though he has all of these undesirable traits. Makes sense. I mean, makes sense. Um, you can't have it all, right? You can't have your cake and eat it too. Um, let's see what people had to say about this conversation. First comment here comes from a woman and it reads, we have an Arabic proverb that translates to because of scarcity flows diminish, which literally explains what you just said. Ah, huh? that's a good saying because of something being scarce as in, a high value man, which all you women want, you are willing to forgive their flaws, them exercising options. Creator responded back to that chick and says, this is beautifully put. Wow. Thanks for sharing. Another gentleman here says, you literally just said what he said in different words. That is true. They both said the exact same thing. And I, I, think she thought she disagreed with him. And then another woman responded and says, literally said the same thing with exquisite wording, laugh, laughing emoji, but I guess she right and he's right. I will say this though, one thing that the woman fails to understand about women, and she probably won't agree with this, is sometimes women don't need to know a man's value, right? In the, in the example she gave, the man being the nice car. Sometimes you don't need to be an actually nice car. If you can convince women, for example, using the nice car analogy, and you got like a hoopty or something like that, right? And everybody was around that car going, wow, this, this is so dope. I'm talking about a normal person would ask, why are they surrounding and acting like this trash car is so amazing? But if you do that around women and you're just like, wow, this thing is so nice, but the car looks like trash. It's a hoopty, registration is out, uh, uh, seats are ripped up. But if you're there enamored by the car and you have enough people who place value on the car, women, will also start to value that car. They'll say, what is it about that car that all these people like? That's the whole explanation of Pookie, right? And women's attraction to a guy like that. Pookie being the salesman who sells a bunch of those cars and people drive it and they're like, damn, I got scammed. But the women representing the people who go and buy that car because they hear that like, oh, I see social proof that other people think that car is awesome. I'm curious now. 
My main point is women also work in the way that you don't necessarily need to be great. You don't necessarily need to be high value on paper. If you can prove that other women seek you out and you have enough game, right? It's sales to convince women to date you and she can see that high quality women or multiple women find you attractive. Women will also be attracted to you because they just have that whole hive mentality, right? They're like sheep. That's just the truth. Next comment here says, in the absence of better options. No, no, it's not the absence of better options because in the scenario I just gave, it's there are better options, but they will fall for that type of game too. Another guy responded back to that chick and says, what happened to we don't settle? Sounds like you are if you make exceptions for us with money. Women do make exceptions for um, men depending on their socioeconomic status. Women will go down in loyalty, sexual history for a man who they consider to be economically attractive. Men are different. They will go down in looks and other qualities for a woman who's feminine, doesn't have a crazy sexual history, and is also loyal. Another comment here says, what I literally heard is we see the red flags, we know they're there, but since he's desirable, I'm gonna run to him anyway. They're not red flags to women. Women are confusing, guys, I get it. But you have to understand, they're not actually red flags to women. Women just value different things. They care less about a man's sexual history um, and his loyalty, depending on how economically attractive that man is to that woman. It's a bitter truth, I know, it's black coffee. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Next, we have a thread here to start out with the man who says, to redirect, what sense does it make to buy the nice car and know that it is high maintenance, then complain about said maintenance? That is true. This guy brings up a good point. Women will expect that man um, after they realize that he attracts multiple women and exercise options to now be loyal. That there starts the delusion. Some women get it. Most women don't. Somebody else responded back to that guy and says, this is what they don't realize and don't address. If you know you're sacrificing loyalty and self-control for the status, money, and desirability, then why do they complain when they get cheated on? Does it make sense to me? It doesn't. Another person added and said, so they're supposed to settle for something they're not attracted to? Be for real. Next comment here says, not all go for what you're attracted to, but if what you're attracted to is constantly hurting you, perhaps it's time to consider exactly why. Next, we have a woman here who says, this is a great video, but let's be for real. They do the same thing with IG models. Even if she belongs to the street, they will overlook it J just to smash not for a serious relationship. Another guy responds and says, true, but they won't expect her to be loyal to him. They won't want to marry said woman either. That's facts. The woman responds to him and says, tell that to Kanye with a sad eye, and that does nothing to the good women they hurt in the process. Kanye, really? We're looking to Kanye for uh, example on who's picking the right women or not? And the woman responds and says, nice deflection. The last comment says, Kanye is an exception. He's also manic, so I don't know. The final comment in this video reads, if you understand the shortcomings of such men beforehand, then who is to blame? That's true. Shortcomings or just what it is. Maybe shortcomings depending on what you want. He goes on to say, just asking dot, dot, dot. Someone else responds to that and says, they will blame all men and say they all ain't shit instead of taking accountability for their actions. Here you know what you guys think. Leave your comments down below. Listen, I appreciate y'all for checking out yet another episode of The Coffee Pod. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.